What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and welcome to Linux Workshop Part 2. Today, we're going to be covering connecting to your Ubuntu server that you created in Part 1. If you need to know how to do that, make sure you go check out Part 1 and then come back here. I wanted to try out doing a pre-recorded version as opposed to another live version, and then I will be running a poll to see which one you guys prefer, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Today, we are going to be utilizing, of course, Hyper-V still. I do you think that other virtualization software offers plenty of good options such as a VMware Workstation or Parallels on Mac or of course VirtualBox which is a very popular one. If you are doing a bare metal install of course utilizing VMware ESXi on that or Proxmox may be something you're doing. I am going to assume that you if you are utilizing another virtualization method you're just here for the specifically the tutorials on the Ubuntu side, that's completely fine. That being said, we are going to be covering how to connect via the Hyper-V hypervisor because that is the tutorial that we are moving forward with. After that, pretty much everything else is gonna be done when within a terminal, within of course the server, so you can follow along pretty easy as far as that is concerned. So, to get things started, you're going to have basically three high level connection options that we're going to be talking about today, but we're only going to be covering two of them, right? One is going to be obviously a connection via the console. Now, this is the most powerful connection that you can have from a changes perspective. This is because essentially it mimics connecting to the system like you were actually there in front of a physical box. This means making changes to the kernel and doing recovery, etc., is going to be available on the console itself. And this is going to be important later on in the tutorials when we're covering things like recovering root passwords, unlocking them, and that sort of thing. We'll be covering that, of course, later, though, but it's important that you understand how to connect via console. Now, the next part is going to be SSH, and we'll be connecting via SSH, utilizing both in this tutorial the PowerShell module within Windows, as well as PuTTY, which is an application. Now, this is important to understand that there are other options outside of this, depending on the operating system you're running. So if you're going to be running, of course, Mac OS, you might just be opening up Terminal, or you might be utilizing something like Xterm. If you would like Mac-specific tutorials, let me know, and we can maybe talk about doing that in a separate video completely. As well as, of course, there's the Linux option, which is going to be pretty straightforward and easy, too, because you're just going to be opening the Terminal and connecting via S. SSH. All of these options, of course, uh, can basically have pros and cons to them. And so just keep that in mind. Now, finally, there is the obvious option of connecting via something like FTP or SFTP. This is going to be for file transfer protocols. Obviously, that's what the FTP stands for. And that will be covered when we move into configuring it for a file server slash like managing files, doing things like compression and decompression and moving files between machines. So that will be covered in a completely different tutorial. So if you're here for figuring out how to connect via SFTP or FTP, et cetera, and utilizing a tool like something like WinSCP, which is a great tool to utilize. I, I like that one a lot. Then we'll just wait. Also, FileZilla would be another one. But just wait. Be patient. We will get to that. Today, we're just going to be talking about the basic connections. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into connecting via console. And like I said, in this particular case, we are utilizing Hyper-V. So you may have a different method of connecting to it. And I'm hoping that if you have, of course the experience with your particular hypervisor that you already know how to connect. If you're following along in this guide and you want to know how to connect, we did cover it a little bit, but all you have to do here is right click and click the connect button. At that point, you will essentially be presented with your virtual machine connection. We're having a few issues here, but that's probably because we disconnected the drive and then reconnected it in. It'll then ask you for your login. I believe what we did here was the GOAT. Had to remember the login there, but we're logged in and we're ready to go. So at this point, you can go ahead and log in and you are ready to go. So you will need to log in via console to move on to the next section, which is connecting via SSH on Windows PowerShell. 
And so to do this, the first thing you're gonna need to do is once you're logged in, do the IPA command and record down the IP address for your ETH0 adapter. In this case, it's the 192.168.40.120. And you can just open up a notepad. I like notepad plus plus a lot. So you can just open up that notepad here. We'll type it in. 192.168.40.120. And then we have that IP here so we know which one we're connecting to and we can move on. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is just confirm that the SSH daemon is running. To do that, we're gonna do the system CTL command. And then we're looking for the status of SSHD. And as you can see here, it does have it as active and running. So we know that that is running. And then we want to make sure that port 22 is listening. So to do this, and we'll be covering all of these other commands in detail later on down the line, but you can copy this out of the tutorial if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the page so you can read this a little bit easier, but we're gonna do sudo lsof dash i dash capital P dash n. And then we're going to pipe it and we're going to grep for SSHD. And then it's going to ask for our password because we did use elevated request. And then you can see here that it shows that we are listening TCP on port 22. So we know port 22 is listening for SSHD. So we know what we're going to connect with. And that's how we're going to confirm it. The last thing that we need to do is make sure that a firewall isn't enabled, potentially blocking it. Now, by default, most of the time this isn't installed, but this is a troubleshooting step in case you're having trouble connecting via the uh, via the SSH. And you can do this by doing sudo UFW and then status. And you can see here that it's inactive. Now, if it was active, you can go through and shut it off by doing like sudo UFW stop and that sort of thing and disabling the service. And that's how you would move forward. From here on out though, we're gonna be working within Windows. So this is gonna be a little pretty straightforward. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and look for manage optional features and get that open. And at this point, you're going to want to search for open SSH. And then you're going to wanna to click in here and click the install button. Mine is already installed more than likely if you're running Windows 10, yours is already installed as well. Once that's done, we're just gonna go ahead and open up PowerShell. So we're gonna search for PowerShell and click Windows PowerShell. And the connecting is as simple as typing SSH for our command, and then typing our username for the server, which is Sun in this case, and then at, remember the IP that we recorded down in Notepad++, we can just come in here, right click and say copy, and then right click into the console window and it'll paste it right in there for us. So we're gonna connect with username Sun at 192.168.40.120. If you were utilizing a port that is separate, you may also need to add in the port and you can do the colon in the port as well there if you need to add that in. At this point, you'll press the enter button. It'll say the authenticity of the host can't be established. Would you like to connect still? And yes, we would like to connect still. At this point, it'll ask you for the password to the Ubuntu server for the username that you typed in. So you type that in and press enter. And what you can see here is that it says sun at ubu-2-92 because we actually accidentally named it 92 instead of 02, but that's fine. And that means that we're connected. So to confirm that we're connected to the right thing, this is what I always want to tell you guys to do is always make sure that you go ahead and run things like host name, right? That will spit out the host name here, the Ubu 292, which we confirmed is the correct one. Then we want to go ahead and type in the who I am I. It'll tell us son, which is that username. So we've confirmed both the username and the host name so we know we're connected to the right machine with the right user. And then finally, we will go ahead and run the pwd command to confirm that our starting directory is the home slash sun directory. And at this point, we can start executing any other commands that we like, maybe an ll to see what files we have here in the home directory, maybe an ls, ls-ltr maybe, there we go something along those lines, kind of see what's going on, see how everything is functioning and making sure that we're ready to go. So 
from here, we're going to go ahead and talk about Putty, right? So for Putty, you can go ahead and download Putty from the internet if you so choose. And I will have the links down below. We already have it installed. And I assume that you know how to install applications, but you can just download Putty over here and then get it installed on your system. Once you have it installed, you can go click down on the search and search for Putty and get that opened up. Now, what you want to do is find the IP that we found earlier with IPA and right click and say copy. And then you can right click and click paste into here. Then what I recommend you do is save the connection so you can load it later. As you see here, we already actually have Ubuntu or Ubuntu 92 already saved. We can just say Ubuntu-02 for us here. We click save. And then at that point, if we click load on any of these, it'll load the new IP. You see here? So we click load and then we have the new IP and we can click the open button. If you would like to go ahead and change the appearance, you can do this as well by clicking appearance in the left hand side. And what I like to do is come in here and just kind of change the font up to something I like. And I always like to increase the size. I usually like 92 on a 1080p screen or 22, excuse me. But it won't actually save that unless you back to the session and click the save button again. So make sure you go back to the session, click the save button again. Once you've made the changes in the appearance you want, then you can click the open button. You'll be presented with a security alert asking if you want to accept connecting to that machine. Of course we do. So we'll click accept. And at that point we can log in just like we would everywhere else. So we'll do the sun and the see you next Tuesday. Press enter. We can clear the screen if we like to make it a little bit easier. And then at this point, we will go ahead and go through the same process. We want to type in host name to confirm that we are on the correct machine. Then we'll type in who am I to confirm that we are logged in with the correct user. And then we'll, we will type in PWD to make sure we are starting from the correct directory. Once we've done all that, we can begin the work for the day. So there you go, guys. That's how to access your Ubuntu server. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe down below if you did. And then let me know if you prefer this to be a live session where at the end we answer any questions that people may have, or if you prefer the pre-recorded session, and then we will begin to do the rest of the series in whichever format you guys prefer. And I'll do a tutorial, or not a tutorial, but I'll do a... a, a poll on the community tab for the YouTube to ask this question as well. In the next video, we will be covering some more fun stuff. Let me go ahead and get that open for you. I believe the next video we will be covering. Yeah, in the next video, we will be covering file system navigation. So file system navigation is going to be quite fun. And I think that you guys will learn a ton from it. So make sure you stay tuned and you're subscribed for that. I will see you next Tuesday.